All right, today, Python list comprehensions versus the reduce function. So we know about map, we know about filter, but what's going on with the reduce function, especially in Python 3, and especially in relation to list comprehensions? I had that same idea that, you know, map and filter are, are pretty good with list comprehensions. You can basically do the same thing in a list comprehension that you can do with those functions. But what about reduce? And a lot of people have had this question. So can, be re can reduce be translated to list comprehension? Reduce list comprehension? You know what I mean? Um, so people want to know what's going on with reduce. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So to give you some background, let's start by looking at the famous Fate of Reduce article by Guido, the creator of Python, written in 2005. And this article is talking all about functional programming in Python and Lambda Reduce, Filter, and Map. And what he goes on to say here, speaking specifically about Reduce, is it's the one that he's always hated the most because he's found it difficult to reason about for any non-trivial trivial functional argument. So in his mind, it's just way better to use a normal function and to not use the reduce function. So basically what happened in the aftermath of this 2005 article is when Python 3.0 came out in 2009. Um, these are the docs, again, written by Guido. And if we see what's going on with reduce, we will see that it was removed in Python 3 and the reduce function was relegated to the func tools library. So if you want to use reduce, you're going to have to import it from the func tools library. However, Guido says that 99% of the time, a for loop will be more readable than the reduce function. So there you have it. Um, the reduce function is no longer in Python 2 and or in Python 3, I should say. And I'll load up a Python 2 shell here, just so you can see how that works. So here's our Python 3, my colored shell. And I had a function here um, ready to go. So I'm just going to pull that, put it into Python 2, and it works out of the bat. Um, I didn't even have to import a library. I didn't have to import a function, nothing. Um, but if I want to run the same thing in Python 3, I'm going to get an error saying that reduce is undefined. So what we have to do is from funct tools import reduce. Um, so now that we've imported it, we can run our command and we get that same 10, that same result from Python 2, um, doing it in Python 3, but having to import a library to do so. All right, so now we know how to import reduce. Um, what actually is it and how does it compare to a list comprehension? So let's clear our shell. And I found this really good documentation that I want to show you that'll kind of explain the logic. And basically this tree is really cool. And it shows you how um, basically as we iterate over an iterable, um, we're applying the function every single time. And in this case, um, this X plus Y here means that we're adding things together. So you see the 47 and the 11 get added to 58. And then 42 and 58 get added to 100 and then 13 and 100 get added to 113. So you see how we're kind of like adding things in that way? Well, this is kind of how reduce works, and how would that even work as a list comprehension? That's the thing, is that's where um, these things kind of break down. The way they iterate is different, and there's, it's just gonna be very difficult to recreate what reduce does as a list comprehension, it's going to be much easier to recreate what reduce does as a normal for loop. But uh, the, the purpose of this video, the purpose of this course is talking about a list comprehension context. So, I mean, I guess we'll try to do a little bit of that. So here um, we're adding the numbers, right? So we're doing one plus two is three, and then three plus three is six, and then six plus four is 10. So we're adding things up. So if you were to do that as a list comprehension, um, how do you sum things up in a list comprehension? Well, uh, list comprehensions can only return lists or iterables. It's not going to return a digit. So what we would have to do is actually wrap sum around our list comprehension. And then what? We're adding things up. Um, technically, I don't think we have to do anything. So we could just do i for i in um, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
uh, add in. So that's kind of the equivalent. Um, there wasn't even any iteration really going on here um, in our list comprehension, but you know that's what that would look like. And um, another common one instead of adding this would be to multiply it. And so what's happening here? So we're doing um, one times two is two, and then two times three is eight, and then eight times four is 24. Okay, so how would we do that as a list comprehension? Um, I have no idea. It's probably doable. Leave a comment if you want. But that is to basically just say that um, list comprehensions in reduce is different and um, there's just some things that you can do in one that you cannot do in the other. Another one that people like to do is flatten lists. So here's our multi-level list and we can assign this to B. And so say we wanted to flatten this so we just had one list of one two one two one two one two. So what would that look like in a list comprehension? Well, it actually be a it would require two for loops. So we'll do um, for sublists in B for I in sublist, I believe. So that'll flatten it one two one two one two. So that's how you would flatten a list in a list comprehension. And if we were to use reduce. Um, I would use the lambda x, y. So hopefully this should work. Yes. And what we're doing here is we're adding up the list. So um, when you, you know that when you add lists together that they uh, combine. So it's kind of like one, two plus one, two. So you see how when you add lists together, they combine. So that's basically what we're doing um, in reduce is we add two lists together and then we add that bigger list to the, the third list. Um, so there's a way to flatten lists using either reduce or list comprehension. So there are some tasks um, that you would use a list comprehension for um, that you could do with reduce and vice versa. Um, but again, for the most part, they're a little bit distinct. A last one that's pretty cool is to find the max of something. So let's just say we had a list um, one, two, three, four, and the max is four. And we want to find the max here. So what we would do is have an if statement here, and you do um, x if x is greater than y, else y. And that'll return four, that'll return max in that series of values. So if we add a five here, um, that'll return five. So this is something that, um, can't be done with a list comprehension um, where we're returning a number and if instead you would have to go all the way back to where I'm doing sum and maybe we could do max around this. Yeah, so that's another way to do it. So reduce, um, just know that you can do if statements in your lambda here and otherwise um, you're gonna have to wrap things around your list comprehension or otherwise operate on your list comprehension outside of it. The last thing I want to show you guys is how the reduce function, uh, which takes a function and iterable as arguments. Well, this function here um, needs to take two arguments because we're comparing X and Y all the time. Um, we're comparing two things all the time. So the function that you pass to reduce um, needs to be a function that takes two arguments as well. So let's just say I create a function that only has one argument. Um, so let's just say we'll call it greater than two, um, which I've used as a function in a past video. So then we return i greater than two. So that takes one argument, right? And if we try to pass this greater than two, um, we're gonna get an issue and it very explicitly tells you that um, we only had one positional argument, two were needed. Um, so we need a new function. So how about we'll do add to, and this takes two arguments, a and b, and then we'll return a plus b. So now with our reduce function, instead of the greater than two, we'll do add to, um, and we run that, and that'll work successfully. That'll add up our numbers to three. Um, we can even add a third number, adds it to six, so forth and so on. So just make sure that the function you're passing to reduce has two arguments. And this is different than a list comprehension. You can use any function for list comprehension. 
one, two, three or more arguments, whatever you want to do, as long as you're passing the right amount of arguments to it. Um, but reduce, you're going to need two or more due to the structure, due to how we're um, comparing things like this the whole way down. So just something to keep in mind. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching and enjoy.